In the last presentation, we discussed the general property of asymptotic notations. Now we will discuss the reflexive property. So let's get started and let's see the topics. The topic of this lecture is asymptotic notations reflexive property. We will discuss the reflexive property of asymptotic notations in this lecture. Let's first understand what is the reflexive property and through the example, we will understand how the reflexive property is satisfied. This is the reflexive property. If fn is given, then fn is Biko of fn. What does this mean? If fn is given to us, then we can say fn is asymptotically bigger than fn or it can be equal to fn. We know if we have fn on both sides, then they are asymptotically equal. But it might also be possible that fn can grow asymptotically bigger than fn. Now you might be wondering how is it possible? fn is equal to fn. How is it possible that fn can grow asymptotically bigger than fn? This is because we can always multiply fn by some positive constant for which we can make it grow asymptotically bigger than fn. So it is possible that fn can grow asymptotically bigger than fn. Through this graph also, it makes sense why fn can grow asymptotically bigger than fn. Here in place of c times gn, we have c times fn. This means fn is multiplied by some constant c. This c is some positive constant. Because of the multiplication by the constant c, as we can observe, c times fn is growing asymptotically bigger than fn. This is some n naught. After n naught, we can observe c times fn is growing asymptotically bigger than fn. Hence, we can say, fn is big O of fn. From this graph, it is clear that the reflexive property is satisfied for fn. If fn is some function and it is available to us, then fn is big O of fn. Now, let's try to prove this mathematically as well. Through the graphical representation, it is clear that fn can grow asymptotically bigger than fn. But now let's prove this reflexive property mathematically as well. For this, let's take a simple example. And from the example, let's try to prove this property. Here is the example. Let fn is 3n. Is fn equal to big O of fn? fn is given to us. fn is 3n. Can we say fn is big O of fn? Or can we say fn grows asymptotically bigger than fn or equal to fn? We know from the definition of Biko notation that fn is Biko of gn if and only if fn is less than or equal to c times gn for all values of n where n is greater than or equal to n naught and c and n naught are constants. We now need to prove this inequality is true. And if we succeed in proving this inequality, then we would be able to prove that fn is indeed big O of fn. In place of gn, we now have fn. So we need to replace gn by fn. And here also we need to replace gn by fn. So we need to prove that fn is less than or equal to c times fn in order to prove that fn is big O of fn. Now what is fn? fn is equal to 3n. We can replace fn by 3n and here also we can replace fn by 3n. What about c? Let us assume that c is equal to 2. We are taking c as 2 and now if we multiply c that is 2 by fn then we will get 2 times 3n because fn is 3n and this is equal to 6n. So, in the right-hand side of the inequality, we will get 6n and in the left-hand side, we will get 3n because fn is 3n. So, the inequality is 3n less than or equal to 6n. Can we say this inequality is true? If this inequality is true, then fn is indeed big O of fn. 
This inequality is true for all values of n greater than 1. We can plug in different positive values of n and we will always observe that 3n is less than 6n. Therefore, this inequality is true and hence we can say fn is bico of fn. Therefore, this reflexive property is satisfied for some fn. We chose an arbitrary fn and we have proved that fn is bico of fn. This is the mathematical proof of fn equal to bico of fn. Surprisingly, fn is also big omega of fn. This means fn can grow asymptotically lesser than fn. But how is it possible? We just proved that fn is asymptotically bigger than fn. Then how is it possible that fn can grow asymptotically lesser than fn? How is it the case that fn is both the upper bound and the lower bound of fn? We saw for c equal to 2, fn is big O of fn because we just saw this inequality 3n less than or equal to 6n. This inequality is true and hence we saw that fn is big O of fn. But how do we prove that fn is also big omega of fn? We know in case of big omega notation, we have greater than or equal to sign. So, the inequality is fn greater than or equal to c times gn. We know in this case gn is fn. So, the inequality is fn greater than or equal to c times fn. Let us suppose that c is equal to 1 by 3. So, we will get 1 by 3 times 3n in the right hand side because fn is 3n. And in the left hand side, we have 3n. So, the inequality becomes 3n greater than or equal to n because 1 by 3 times 3n is n. So, now we have the inequality 3n greater than or equal to n. Now, imagine fn which is 3n and c times fn which is n on the graph. It is clear that fn will grow asymptotically bigger than c times fn because fn is 3n and c times fn is just n. So, clearly c times fn is the lower bound of fn and hence we can say fn is big omega of fn. So, we now also know that fn can grow asymptotically lesser than fn. Up to this point, we have the clarity that fn can grow asymptotically bigger than fn and it can also grow asymptotically lesser than fn. This means fn is also theta of fn. Because if fn is the lower bound and fn is also the upper bound of fn, then it is clear that fn is theta of fn. Or we can say fn is asymptotically equal to fn. So, it is clear that the reflexive property is not only satisfied for big O notation, but it is also satisfied for big omega and theta notations. So, with this, I hope you understood what is the reflexive property and why the reflexive property is true. So, with this, we are done with this topic, asymptotic notations, reflexive property. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay, friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.